Corey, you and your family have a project that I think you're going to take on here in the next 12 months. But we also have listeners who have written in saying that, one, they're saving up their money to make a purchase in agriculture. Or two, they've identified a couple of properties and wanted us to tackle the topic today to see how best practice or best way to approach rehabbing or revitalizing those, Corey. So now that I've teased our listeners a little bit, what are we talking about today? We are talking about livestock facilities and specifically hog barns and hog barn remodels. And this, the, the thing that you talked about <clears throat> that we are looking at doing in the next 12 months is, is a remodel of our hog barn, hog barns that are 23 years old. Yeah. 20, well, 20, almost 25 years old, actually. Right. Yeah. We got to get Oh my further. gosh. It's uh time flies. Yeah. Um, but I'm kind of concerned with the Those way interest rates. older than you are. They are <laughs> almost. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Right. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot of factors that go into the decisions that you're going to make, but why do you think it's important to do an entire episode on something like this? There's a lot to tackle it's not just as easy as going in and doing gates or going in and doing this or that because i mean if the gates are out then well that's a great opportunity to look at slats and if that's out then that's a great opportunity you know it just keeps snowballing and it it can be very overwhelming um because of it it takes a lot of skill not something that you do on the farm every day and it's expensive Right. Materials are expensive. Labor's hard to find. And you know what? Um, pig, pig barns are meant to have pigs in them. And the people that have own the pigs, they don't like to not have pigs in your barn. So it's right. got to be done in a timely fashion too. So there's probably going to be things that we pull out of our conversation today that applies outside of the hog industry mm-hmm. that will translate. But also if you're looking at getting into the industry and potentially looking at an older barn because of lower cost to purchase. Yep. Now we can give you some expertise here as we converse with Nick Stellern. He's the service manager at Integrity Builders and Supply. Welcome to the podcast, Nick. Thanks for having me, guys. So let's dive in a little bit deeper. Who is Nick? How'd you get to where you are? Oh, I don't know if a sour long segment is going to be enough. (laughs) (laughs) Try it. No, it's um, so I got uh, I got my start here at Integrity about 10 years ago. Um, started, um, just doing low level service stuff, fixing some easy stuff on barns, which easy stuff I usually say is like cables or patching up curtains. Um, and I slowly worked my way up to just learning more. I got more involved in controls and the electrical side of things. And that's kind of, we snowballed it all together and started developing the service department. We grew a lot bigger, um, over these 10 years and we, um, kind of do anything and everything inside of a hog barn now. Yeah, the hog barns, it's the true testament of what a farmer is, I feel like. Because, like just you said, electrical, but then you got to know the basics down to a cable breaking, but then animal husbandry to some huge fixes that, you know, could potentially go wrong. So Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a tough world to tackle. So uh, let's just do another uh, overview. How Where is Integrity at and uh, how many employees you got and what, what all do you guys handle? Um, so we're based out of New London, Iowa, which is southeast corner of the state. Um, we are about 20 employees or so, uh, full-time employees, and we bring up um, migrant help, um, HOA program um, over the course of like the building season, I'd call it. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, we take care of pretty much anything you think of on and in a hog barn. So um, ventilation, controls, um, electrical um, curtains, fans, ceilings, roofs, the structure itself, concrete. I mean, pretty much anything you can think of. The only thing we don't really do is have our own rock quarry and we don't normally deal with gas lines. We kind of leave that to the the gas companies that supply the LP to barns. So when you think about the topic we're discussing today, barn remodeling, is this something that's become more of a necessity or more popular in the last five to 10 years than it was 20 to 25 years ago? hundred um, percent. I, I think what we've seen uh, as time has passed here um, back when I started 10 years ago, barns were relatively cheap as compared to today where you were getting, you know, five to seven year loan payoffs. 
Uh, nowadays, that's not even a possibility. I mean, most of them are pushing 20, sometimes 30 year payoffs. Ooh, so wow. it doesn't make a lot of sense to build new, um, whereas you can spend a fraction of that remodeling. And uh, the majority of the barns that were built 20 to 25, even 30 years ago, they're coming up on that cusp of needing some major remodel work. And it's still a lot less expensive than building new. Were there a lot of barns built in that time period, that 25 to 35 years ago, like Corey's age of barns? Yeah, there's a bunch of them. Um, there was a, oh, I think it was in the late 90s, there was a bunch that were put up in early 2000s, which doesn't seem like it's that far away, but <laughs> it's it's been 20, you know, 20 years, 22 years. So um, I know in this area, just like center, or southeast Iowa, where we're at, you can't go much more than a couple miles without seeing a hog barn. And they've been there long before we started putting buildings together. So, I mean, they're, um, most of them are pushed in 20 plus easily. Yeah, like you said, the, uh, the payoff on these barns, it, it doesn't cash flow anymore. Like it once did. Uh, you right. have to really lean on the value of the manure, which is very valuable right now. Right. Um, but mm-hmm. won't always be like that or shouldn't always be like that. So it, it we don't want to lean on that too hard to have to make mm-hmm. these barns work. Um, it, it's just kind of, it, it blows my mind. And that's why we're looking at a remodel because yep. otherwise I would love to just tear the dang things down and put new up. Put brand new up. Right. You know, cause mm-hmm. the, the environment in there, um, there's a lot of salt in the feed and manure on stuff. You know, it's just an environment that isn't inviting for longevity of steel and electronics yep. and, uh, yep. And, you know, pigs get to be 300 pounds and they wear concrete out and steel out. And it's just, it's crazy. So we need to look at remodeling because it is truly an asset to the farm and not just cash flow, but also the manure. You know, I I was listening to Corey and I was also thinking about how you guys should have your own TV show. Something like a, you know, like a Windy City Rehab or a Chip and Joanna Gaines, but you're doing it to hog barns. (laughs) I think uh, maybe the listeners should. Love it or list it. Type. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> Are you going to remodel yes. this or put a new one up? Or just be the smart person and get out of livestock altogether. Yes. <laughs> I think we could it totally. It would be entertaining. <laughs> so, but if we think of the TV show, just to kind of keep running with that, you know, a couple of those shows, they've got people that they show them around to three or four different houses, and then they pick the characteristics that they have the most promise or the most value. So if we've got... I know we've got at least two listeners that have written in that said they just don't know what to look for because there's some older style barns that, that are in their area. If you're driving around the countryside, what, what are some good things to look for that might be buildings worth rehabbing? Um, so I would say, you know, as far as a building goes, there's three major things. Um, what, what we would consider major things, it's concrete, the structure, and then basically the interior equipment. So, I mean, the biggest thing I think for on, as far as not spending a whole lot, but getting the bang for your buck, um, making sure the concrete and the foundation is in good shape. You know, there is a lot of money tied up in concrete and the foundations for those and the slats that were put on them. If you've got a building that's rock solid, as far as concrete goes, you're about a third of the way into having a good barn. Um, and then the next thing we look for is the structure. So, um, you said it it, over time, it's, it's not a very friendly environment inside these barns with the gases and the feed and, and just the quality of the water is a problem too, because most of these are well water and it's not usually good treated well water. Um, you see a lot of rust and, uh, metal just corroding. Um, so if you think about how the buildings are built as far as the wooden construction, they're nailed and screwed and and metal is holding them together and the steel on the roof, uh, that stuff starts to degrade, you know, 20, 25, 30 years down the line. Uh, That is another kind of pain point to look at on these barns. So I would say, you know, check concrete, check foundation, check the structure. Um, The insides can be remodeled very easily as far as equipment goes, because that changes almost every year as far as specs go on buildings. Um, they change what they want inside the barns. So that's not usually a huge deal. Your biggest costs are again, yeah, concrete and the building. Yep. I mean, so, so much of this is specialized. Um, 
I've been in a hog barn almost every day for the last 10 years of my life. I still don't know if I could go to someone else's hog barn, not knowing it because there's so many different kinds um, or different setups and be able to tell you if it's good or not. Are, do you guys offer like a service that yeah. you could come and, and look at a barn if we're interested in buying or, or just one we that sure we own? Can. Yeah, we sure. So we uh, basically operate on the free estimate mantra. Uh, we like to come out and take a look at everything you've got there on site at the barn, uh, make recommendations as far as what we see you probably need to be working on. And uh, we also offer um, every turn. So at, at the end of every animal turn or herd um, age, we offer a tune up of sorts where we come in and look at all of what we call the pain points um, in barns and make a list on how bad things are getting or how good a shape things are still in so it's kind of like running your tractor or the combine through the special at the local dealer right at, at the end of the season yeah i was just thinking yep. about that yep so i want to go, go back to your number one item to look at is the quality of the concrete condition of the concrete yep. so yep. a lot of the barns for our listeners that maybe aren't aren't familiar listening is that we're talking about is there's a six or eight foot, sometimes rarely 10 foot pit beneath yep. a slatted floor. On some. On some. Yep. Yep. And, and for probably a majority of those that carry the most value today, that's the style. Or they're flushed into a lagoon. Mm-hmm. But either way, how do we know that the concrete's good in the pits? I mean, we, we have to be pumped empty or is there, is there something we can look at? To make sure we've got Um, good walls. So, so the, the easiest thing to look at would be basically the exterior of the building. Um, You can find cracks uh, and and, uh, failures in the concrete um, around the exterior of the building. Um, That isn't always the best thing to look at because the exteriors usually don't show what's going on. It's usually the interior where all the manure is sitting and it's everything. at the concrete on the inside would be one yeah to pump it down kind of look down in there and see what we got Uh, you can't usually pump all the way down to the floor it's it's pretty difficult but you can still see the exterior walls from the inside and you can see if there's cracks you can see them usually Mm -hmm. Um, and then the other thing would be slats and beams so in in the pit are columns uh, and in different barns they were made out of different things but most most of the time it's a solid concrete column and on top of the column sits a beam, and on top of the beam sits the slats. Well, those you can look at very easily from above. Um, you might need a flashlight or something to look, but you can start seeing concrete wearing out very quickly on beams and the undersides of slats um, well before you see um, oh, any major damage um, if you're looking for it. And it's, 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 it's kind of an art, I would say. I mean, there are some specialized companies out there that come and look at slats um, that just fully do slat replacements only and they've got cameras and whatnot to to stick down in there and take a look at the bottoms of the slats because a lot of the time slats wear out from the bottom up because that's where the manure and the gases and all that stuff is sitting and it'll start eating at the concrete and if it chips it away it gets to the rebar and then the rebar rusts and then you've got failure in the concrete Hmm. so Corey, when you're looking at your family's barns and putting the remodel together are you going to have to follow certain specs because of the pigs that you have in there as you do the remodel or can you go about any design you want to do uh i would say typically if you're like with what i would call an integrator which is one of the larger uh, pig owners they would have certain specs um basically pertaining to what feeders you have what uh, size of pens you have what kind of you know style of waters and what controller you have in the barn um, the people that I am specifically feeding for really aren't that, uh, you know, worried about it. Um, but that being said, I want my barn marketable that, you know, they might not be the ones that want to put pigs in my barn in three years. So if that happens, I want to be marketable. So I think there's some industry standards to, you know, how many waters per pit or how many pigs per water and how many right. you know, per, per feed hole and all that. So, um, whether you want pre the capability to pre-sort before your loads so there's a lot of stuff you have to be thinking about and 
that's in itself is overwhelming. And I think that's why you need someone on your team like integrity that can come in there and help. Cause they work with all the integrators. So is that Nick, is that something that is available? And, and I know there's other companies like integrity, but that's something our listeners can go to you for, to get some perspective. You know, if they, if this is the first hog barn they're buying, they may not know what direction to go. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's definitely something we, 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 we can lean into as far as what integrator you're working with. And even if you don't have a set integrator and you're allowed to make your own decisions, um, just based on kind of the current trends and what we're installing in barns, we can kind of give you the options you would need and show you the pros and cons of those different options. Um, but if it is a integrator bar, uh, building, the spec sheets, we usually have to follow fairly closely. There are some variations in some of the specs as far as, um, certain sizes of buildings, you can do certain different like penning layouts and different feeder combinations. Um, but for the most part, everything's been going to wet dry feeders and, uh, the fast pen gating is a, is kind of a nice option. Um, you know, for guys, it just helps to pre-sort before you have to load out. Um, but most of the time, as far as specs, it, every integrator has their own variation of specs, essentially. Um, there are some common denominators between them, um, but for the most part, they all kind of do something a little different. Hmm. What would be some of the barns? Like if you could say, what is the barns that you are building the most or remodeling the most right now? Is it, is it feeder to finish, wean to finish? Um, is it a certain style? Yeah. Uh, uh, wean to finish is, is probably the majority of the barns that we uh, remodel and work on. We do build feed to finishes. Um, there's not a whole lot of them like in this area, um, specifically that we work on, but we, there, there's the only real difference between those two barns would be the addition of supplemental heat for the wiener pigs, which would be either brooders or tube heat or heat lamps. Um, and then the different kinds of feeders and waters usually kind of coincide with other things. Um, and uh, I would say, you know, for the most part, those barns that were built, you know, 20, 25 years ago, a lot of them were weaned to finish, uh, you know, with, with old heat lamps. And the current trend with heat lamps is nobody really uses those anymore. They've went to brooders or tube heat. So there's a lot of updates when it comes to the wean to finish side of things, more so than the feed to finish side of things, I would say. Have you guys figured out the tube heat yet? Because I hate my brooders. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We've installed quite a few of them. Um, and we we actually really like them. They're fairly low maintenance. Um, we haven't had too many issues with them. Uh, they make the, the ones they put in hog barns are a little more heavy duty than like ones you would put in say a shop. Yep. Um, and they're sealed really well. Um, but they work, they work great. I well, I've installed personally myself. I've installed several of them, um, in, in barns before. And, uh, it's, it's really easy to do and they're really easy to operate and they, they work. I yep. mean, they, they're really good. They're just, uh, they are a very more expensive option yeah. for sure. Well, I can tell you the time, time is money and the time that I have in changing orifices and parts on each individual brooder heater in the barn between <laughs> turns. Yeah. It's like banging my head against the wall. Well, and, that, yep. that's something else to think about is, is the technology has probably come a long ways in the time period from when these barns were built to now we're remodeling. What are some of the newest technologies that you're putting into barns now? Um, some of the big ones, um, so wet dry feeders, uh, a, a lot of the barns around here were built with just dry feeders with say cup waters or, uh, nipple waters. And now the big push is wet dry feeders, which is essentially the feeder and the water all in one. Um, that's a big one. Usually when, when barns are up for, um, like contract renewal feeders is a big one and then controls. So in the past, most of the barns around here were put with, uh, pretty basic controls they work there's nothing really you know wrong with inherently how they work but the biggest thing they've pushed for is more updated more modernized uh, more robust controllers um, that last a little longer uh, the the hardware and stuff inside of them is built better it's it's a little stronger and then the next step above that would be smart controllers which there's several different brands um, that 
you can buy, but the, essentially the basis is you can hook them up to the internet and you can log on to them from your smartphone or tablet or computer, and you can actually see how the barn is operating remotely. That's a pretty big push or push um, as far as uh, remote control of a barn or remote monitoring. So that way you, if you have a big site, you got a lot of barns, you don't have to go to every single one of them to look at what's going on. You can just sign in and look at them all on one screen. Yeah, I know the field advisors really like that kind of stuff too, uh, and guys with uh, multiple sites and stuff. And I, it, it is crazy the technology. I feel like livestock is finally starting to get into some of this higher tech stuff. For a while, I felt like it lagged when right. I first got in about twelve years ago. Um, but you know, all the naysayers that. Oh, I can't believe you put all these pigs in this barn on that concrete and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, you don't realize there's like a twelve thousand dollars worth of a controller in here that has sensors all the way down the barn, and we're pulling fresh air in that's optimal for these pigs. They always have feed and water on a ninety-five degree day. I can walk in there and they're getting misted three minutes every thirty minutes because they don't sweat, and it's ten degrees cooler in there. Right. I mean, and and there could be a bunch of pigs in one pen, and they have all the space they want, but then they go pile on each other because they like to be like to do that. So the technology uh, to to take care of these animals, I mean, we wouldn't do it if it wasn't the best thing. Right, and I don't think our listeners are the group that we have to convince that this is the right way to go. But it is fascinating when you see the Snapchats, the the Twitter posts of it being. 10 degrees below zero out and then they step into their hog barn and it's 72. Yeah. You know, the, mm -hmm. the animals are, are in such great care, but I could see like we were, we were getting into is if you have a field advisor or you have employees that are going to be maintaining these sites, having the technology and those controls is valuable because, you know, not that you don't trust your employee or not that your field guy doesn't trust you. Well, he probably doesn't trust you. <laughs> you have that ability to you know, make sure that we don't have a catastrophic issue. Well, it's, it's redundancy. It's like the same thing of flying a plane or whatever. The more eyes and the more fail safes you have, yep. uh, you know, your field advisor or, or maybe your employee or you might catch, hey, the water consumption's down on this barn. What's going on? Or on water worst, consumption's water down. consumption's <laughs> way up by five times. Oh yeah, a line broke right after they did chores the day before. You know, right. so um, it, it's crazy what we can catch with with the tech, new technology. Well, before we get too much further, Nick, I know our listeners are probably wondering what what kind of money are we looking at. So I mean, obviously, we're not going to know how much a site's going to cost because that that'll depend upon where they're at, how many acres comes with it, how big the barns are. Do you have like an estimate on a per pig or per pig space basis as to what it costs to do slats, what it costs to do feeders, you know, to, to kind of give us an idea? Sure. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it would be fully dependent on, you know, what kind we're talking about. But we've we've priced and have, you know, very recently done pricing that ranges anywhere from $100 a pig space to two or three hundred dollars of pig space depending on how much remodeling and brands uh there are certain brands that offer a little better quality a little better warranty of course they're more expensive um but that that usually covers quite a wide swath of different kinds of remodels anywhere from that 100 to 300 dollar per pig space range that covers quite a bit of of remodeling for the most part um, you know, if there's some specialized stuff or really, really off the wall stuff, uh, the pricing changes, of course, but for a start, you can kind of go off those numbers. It gets relatively close. When I got in, in 2013 to growing pigs, I think $300 a pig space was what it cost to build a new barn. Correct. Yep. Right. Yep. I remember using some of those numbers that in cash a, flows. Yeah. That was a pretty, pretty close turn or close number. Is there... Is it four hundred dollars now to build a new barn? Is it is it more than that? Uh, well, so it depends. Obviously, of course, uh, mm -hmm. what kind of integrator you're talking about, and it depends on the site layout. But you know, all in, brand new site, brand new building. I mean, anywhere from eight hundred and fifty thousand to a million. Sometimes, For depending like a on twenty four. Uh, it, yeah, it's 100? the price is pretty variable 
uh, on new sites specifically just because the amount of rock they need and and i mean you're digging new services for everything so it's usually a little cheaper to put a building on an existing site um but it's you know not much i mean the barns have went up so 30 to 40 percent i'd say pretty easily hmm. well that's that right there's already something i hadn't thought about is the new driveway all the rock that goes around of it all the services for dirt work brand new, the dirt work you know you may have to dig a new well probably have to come dig off, a new well yeah not going to come and off if of you rural go water. rural water uh we had rural water on our pigs for a long time and it was like 1500 bucks a month Oof. how much we were drinking in, in the summer and misting and all that uh so that paid for a new well pretty quick so when <laughs> yeah when you've been working with your clients what what is something that usually gets overlooked you know if we're going through a barn and we're taking taking a look you already talked about concrete we talked about the feeders we talked about the structure but what's something maybe it's small i, I don't know what it is what what usually gets overlooked um so two things uh, i would say ceilings um so there was quite a different uh, array of materials used on ceilings. Um, there was something called triply, which is just kind of like a plastic kind of sheeting that's held up with batten strips. And there's been aluminum, steel, plastic. Um, a, a lot of the times, one of the biggest overlooked things is is on ceiling. Um, it can affect quite a bit. Um, it doesn't really you don't really think about it, but if your uh, ceiling's old or if it's starting to rot away. All of that is just air leaks. So in minimum ventilation, like the, the lowest amount of ventilation you need to move air and, and have enough air for the pigs, uh, it throws all that out the window. If you've got giant holes in the ceiling or if it's leaking really bad from the attic down, um, that's that's a big one. Um, uh, we do a lot of ceiling repairs and have past and quite a few ceiling repairs. And along with ceiling repairs, then the biggest thing is on these older barns, uh, the PVC on the ceiling. So you've got conduit, you've got water, lines. all that stuff gets very brittle over time. And when you're changing ceilings out, the high, the likelihood of that stuff breaking is fairly high. Yeah. So trying to think about, you know, if I'm doing ceiling repairs, it's a good idea to talk about replacing water lines and conduit and everything too. Yeah. Cause I imagine you got all, you got all the labor there tearing everything down. Um, that's probably a big part of the cost. It's just, getting everything down you might as well go back up with new so yep, exactly because the relative cost of materials on that end of things you know it's plastic so yeah plastic prices are all over the place they go up they go down but the amount of plastic that you're putting in there as far as you know runs of water lines or runs of conduit is nowhere near as expensive as the labor it is to put put that kind of stuff up yeah so then you've got a lot of producers that have built barns and ones that have done remodels, what is something that they've put in, like a creature comfort or something along those lines that they feel like they couldn't live without? You know, they, they call you up and they go, oh, my God, that was such a great idea. One of those things like a power tarp on a semi. It's like, right. how did I get along with, <laughs> with, with without that? Right. You know? Yep. Um, oof, that's a good one. I, I, I'm not sure necessarily about creature comfort for sure but as far as ease of using the building fast pens fast alleys um everybody we've installed that in for i mean they love it okay they so what is that go back. I, don't, I don't know if i'm following what is a fast pen or a fast alley so usually uh, just for example say in a building you walk down the center of the building you've got pigs on the left pigs on the right and pens yeah. what the fast penning does is set a section just just outside of that alleyway where all the gates can swing back and forth and you can put pigs in those gates and it's like one big open pen essentially if you're wanting to run pigs out of it you can open all those gates up and every pig that was in that little front section clear path straight to the door yeah so basically you normally had like a 32 or a 36 inch alley that was just wide enough for one or one and a half pigs to go down yep and now it's like a 10 foot or how big is that like a yeah, 10 eight foot, to 10 foot usually gives you the ability to, you know what? Hey, we're pretty busy. We can go in and sort these 10 pigs out of the pen two days before the load, yep. put them in that pen. And then you just open those gates and those pigs aren't getting turned around 
and coming back and fighting you because that 32, 36 inch alley, once that pig gets turned around, for some reason they can turn around once. back at you, <laughs> but they can't turn back around to go out on the truck. Uh huh. Yep. So I would say, and I don't have it, but I think a big creature comfort for me would be a permanent shoot. Yeah. I have a three mm-hmm. barn setup, and we have a shoot that's portable that we move fine and dandy in the summer when it's nice in the winter time when the wind's blowing it starts snowing it's three in the morning not fun especially when it's icy and we we have done a lot of permanent load shoots the last few years um because that 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 time frame of buildings being built here permanent load shoots wasn't really a standard mm-hmm. uh, they did a lot of portable shoots because um, they were moving them from barn to barn to barn anymore now yeah the permanent load shoots it's nice especially in the winter yeah. and the pigs seem to operate a little better you know if, if it's sealed up good they're not getting that cold wind hitting them in the face or you know the sun's not beating down on them it's just you know the standard white led light it's all the same as what's in the building they're used to it they move a lot easier sounds nice so we can do that for you <laughs> right <laughs> oh i've got it quoted they aren't cheap yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so our listeners are are pretty ambitious people. I mean, that's the reason they listen to the Farm for Profit podcast. They're always trying to do do things better, more efficiently, and they may think they want to tackle a job like this themselves. What what are the benefits of using a company like Integrity to go through a process like this? Um, well, for the most part, we figure everything out for you. Um, we have access to all the top major brands very easily. Uh, so a lot of, a lot of the hog barn agriculture kind of stuff around equipment that goes in these barns you got to be a dealer to to get the equipment um you know you could still buy and, and we are a parts warehouse as well you can buy stuff from us directly as you can a, a lot of other places uh, but you know not having to worry about if you bought enough or if you figured it correctly we take care of all that for you so how far do you guys go to work? You said it's, you're out of New London, Iowa. How yep. far have you traveled? How, how many of our listeners can you help? Um, so I'd say standard. Uh, I mean, we have gone up to three to four hours away from there. Um, we've gone farther. We've built some sow units that are quite a bit distance away from there. But as far as regular finishers or nurseries or or, you know, if you need service or something like that, we'll pretty much travel three to four hours away from New London. Okay. Uh, that's a pretty standard, you know, uh, radius for us, I'd say. And are there companies... Once we get past that, unfortunately, it gets very cost prohibitive. Um, you know, our, our costs just get too high and nobody, nobody usually wants to pay for that as much just because it, it gets expensive, especially now with fuel prices the way they are unfortunately things have just gone up so are there companies and once you get past that that (laughs) radius there's usually other companies um, that are just as close um, as well good you answered the question i was stuttering to answer twice i imagine oh sorry i imagine you know some of these bigger projects it's not like you're going up there for a day you gotta you probably almost got to go up there the beginning of the week and stay in a hotel or you know and then you got a lot of h2a workers there's just a lot of bodies you got to house there for a while yep well Corey, yeah, I want... there's usually quite a bit of expense as far as getting the uh the the crews aligned you know how many people do we need and then uh how long do we keep them out there you know because we we like to land at a site finish a job we don't usually like to leave if we can help it we want to finish it um, it just makes everybody happier the customer ends up with a better product because you got guys there already working we don't have to leave and come back um, it, it usually just works better that way do you get the same H2A workers back every year? For the most part, yeah. Um, for the past six to seven years, I think. I can't remember exactly how long we've been getting them, but I would say the majority of the guys we get, it's the same guys. Okay. Um, you know, some guys don't want to come back or they get different jobs or they go to other, you know, companies or something. And sometimes they, we add more guys. You know, when, I, when we first started bringing them up, we didn't bring up near as many guys as we do now. Mm-hmm. So, of course, yeah, we've added some guys and some guys have left to do other things or some guys want to stay home. Um, but like, like I'd say 90 percent of the guys, it's the same guys we started with. That's that's good, because I imagine that's a, I mean, something that you 
would ha- he wouldn't want different people every year. You'd have to retrain them. He'd probably spend right. half the summer retraining them. Yep. Well, I've got only one more question on on my want to ask list about prepping for winter. Do you have any other curious? Your, your family's going into this. Is there anything else that you want to grab out of a conversation like this? I th- I think we've hit most of it. I mean, besides getting the integrators to raise pig rents, uh, I, I, I don't, you know, that's, it's crazy. It's the same. It's the same money for pigs, uh, that it was 13, 12, 13 years ago. And, uh, everything else has moved up. So I don't know right. what we got to do there. Right. Well, this show comes out at the end of November, Nick, and that's, Really close to, if not already, pretty much winter here in Iowa. And, of course, a lot of our fellow listeners. If we already own a barn, what are some things that we can do to prep for winter so we don't have any, any accidents or, or actually have to call you to come fix something? Um, okay, yeah. So, big one, check your heaters. Uh, make sure the heaters are working well before it gets that cold because, uh, you know, it's like anything. It's going to fail at the worst possible moment. So if you're a step ahead, fixing heaters, making sure they actually work, uh, that's that's huge. And then I'd say this next thing, almost equal to that, if your barn has curtains, fixing those up, um, patching holes or putting plastic up or putting a bubble wrap. It's kind of like a reflective material in there to help uh, keep some of the heat in. Um, just anything you can do to help kind of button up, uh, you know, weak parts of the building as far as like doorways putting seals on curtains fixing the holes the gaps and uh and then heaters yeah i mean those are those are always the big ones we work on those all through the winter usually i hate bubble wrap but it is it is (laughs) a necessity (laughs) but i would solid side a barn just so i wouldn't have to do that are you guys putting solid sides on barns quite a bit now yeah um a lot a lot of them uh there's a Certain integrators, that's basically their standard anymore. Solid sidewalls, tunnel curtains at the front of the building, tunnel fan back, uh, just strictly tunnel building. And it's it's an interesting setup. Um, surprisingly, the barns, they're pretty nice. I mean, they the, they keep the uh, temperature fairly constant in those as well. It's, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. So is that something that if Corey's got side curtains, he could convert his barn to tunnel? You could. You sure could. You would want to make sure uh, you you get the adequate CFM per pig, uh, you know, well within that range. We'd have to do some math on it as far as what you got for fans, what you got for curtain opening on the front. Um, but you sure could. We've done it before. We've, we've solid-sided uh, existing curtain-sided buildings before. Interesting. Sometimes we've had to add fans, though, to help compensate for that loss of, you know, a tunnel curtain on the side. Right. I think we've done the math and it would work because my barns actually run in natural and tunnel okay um so they do run in tunnel most of the time right just there's that little 70 degree temperature that we hardly ever get perfect days that it's (laughs) (laughs) the side curtains are down Mm -hmm. oh that's good nick this has been a pleasure having you on the show we'll have you uh plug the integrity contact information website or whichever it is and then you have to answer a question that we ask every one of our guests. What is the best advice that you have ever been given? But you can think about that while I summarize, and then, Corey, you prepare the challenge. Mm-hmm. So today we had Nick Stellern here, service manager at Integrity Builders and Supplies. We were talking about trying to give you, as the listener, some perspective, some experience, and some tips on what it would look like to remodel an existing hog barn. We explored that... The costs of a new hog barn are are quite high because of the site prep costs, the extra rock, you know, the potential well, the the additional utilities that need dug in. And maybe there's a more economical, a more profitable way to raise hogs, and that is to rebuild or remodel a hog site. We're not starting a brand new TV channel or show like Chip and Joanna Gaines. <laughs> I, maybe we will. I don't know. Nick, no. Nick seems to be up for the idea. But if you're going to go look at a site that you don't already own, or you're going to go out and take a look at the one that you do, look at the concrete, look at your structure, and look at the equipment. You can do a lot of that with a visual inspection. Make sure if you do see some issues with your slats that you do some further investigation from the bottom up because they tend to wear out 
from the bottom side of things. If you're starting to put a plan together as to what should I upgrade, uh, things to continue to monitor is what kind of ceilings you have. Maybe we're looking at fast pins or fast alleys. Uh, we're looking at uh, upgrading to wet dry feeders, making sure we have uh, the proper controls, maybe even a smart controller in the setup. But all these things could potentially run us anywhere in the neighborhood of 100 to $300 per pig space, depending upon the quality of the equipment, the amount of the work, and the package that your integrator is going to require. That's the other thing to keep in mind is not all integrators are the same. So if you want to have a more marketable structure, make sure you are doing what is in the best interest of the future of your farm. And then as we get into preparing for winter, take a look at all things that can help keep you more efficient. Take care of those curtains. Make sure everything is in place. Monitor your heaters. If you need to have any of that fixed before times get bad, now is the time to look at that. Corey? My challenge would be if you are in hog barns or other barns, which is another question I'm going to ask you, and I found one, if you guys do other livestock. But if you're in any of the livestock stuff, I would say add integrity builders to your advisory team. Um, you might not need them now, but there's one thing for certain. If you're in livestock, eventually you will need them. <laughs> um, or need someone like them. It might not be in their area, but uh, you need someone on your team that knows what's going on there because um, – you might need to make an emergency call or you might just need to say, Hey, this is an asset. I want to keep going for another 20, 30 years. Guys get in here and uh, fix it up for me. Right. Oh, good. I like that. Great challenge. And Nick, what is the best advice you've ever been given? Um, I would say the best advice I've been given is that don't be afraid to make mistakes or fail. Um, there is a lot that can be learned from failing and making mistakes. Um, I, I would say I would almost argue that you might make your best decisions after you've messed up. You, you learn from that stuff very, very quickly. And if you don't, you make the mistake a second time, you should learn a little quicker, I hope. Right. You would. Yeah. <laughs> it should be even more impactful. No, that was that was really good. I know that Integrity Builders has a great YouTube channel that you guys now, you, know, you might not even be in the area to help our listener, but at least they can go and get educated on what things to, to potentially help them do things better. You also have uh, kind of a fun TikTok channel to follow, but what is the best way for them to reach out to you guys if, if some of our listeners has a question? Um, so the two best ways to reach out to us would be our website, uh, which is integritybuildersandsupplyinc.com. Uh, and then the second best way would be just give us a phone call. Um, our main office number is 319-752-9001. Uh, either Perfect. one of those options will get you the quickest response. Yep. Awesome. And I had one more question yep. that I forgot to ask. So yep. you guys do feeder to finish barns, wean to finish barns, nurseries, sow barns. So that covers pretty much all the gamut of hogs. Is there anything else that you guys build? Sure. Uh, so we can do turkey sheds because uh, they they share similar parts. Uh, we do cattle barns. We do pole sheds. Uh, so pole barns, anything that would be, um, I guess I'd call like a pole barn, any pole barn construction style barn. So um, SIPs panel barns. Um, so like shouses or sh shop homes, mm -hmm. uh, we can build those. Um, I think that that covers most of it as far as new builds. Right. Pretty cool. I'm glad you asked the question. Yeah. I, I, well, what spurred me was Rachel had a, one of those shouses mm. on uh, Integrity Builders TikTok a couple months back. Beautiful, beautiful home. If I could get my wife to convince to live in one of those, <laughs> I would do that. Oh, that is awesome. Yes. Nick, thank you again. It's been a pleasure. We talked uh, probably longer than anybody ever would have thought we could talk about hog barns, but a lot of... <laughs> I think we can keep going. Really good value. I'm sure there's more, yeah. Yes. Listeners, if you've got questions, send them to farmforprofitllc at gmail.com. We'll get you connected to Nick. But until next time, have a good one. <laughs>